Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today, what I'd like to really do is take a look at section 4.2 with these exponential functions. It now, we can really, really clearly see that on problem number 21, we have some massive strategies that we have to get right. On number 49, I want you to really carefully pay attention to that stuff on the right-hand side of the equal sign. As we closely examine this, all right, Jerry, I'd like to take a look at this first example in section 4.2. And I want you to really carefully look at what's happening Evaluating here. exponential functions. That's okay. what we want to talk about. What I like about this problem is that it gives us this cute little picture mm -hmm. to talk really about what's happening. Give the problem context. I like context. Boy, you know... That's a cute little wagon. I really like that. You like that little wagon, Jack? Yeah, Jay? I wonder if they uh, haul cheese on that wagon. Cheese? Yeah. What makes you think of cheese? I've just been, I've just really been into cheese lately. I've been eating a lot of cheese. I like cheese. You What's do? your favorite kind of cheese? You know, I think my favorite's Munster, but you can't eat like, like I like to eat a lot of cheese at once. Oh. And if you do that with Munster, you're going to have a problem. That's, that's going to be a problem. So if I'm just going to have a few slices, I'd say Munster. But, uh, I, you know, I was looking at this guy's picture, though, uh -huh. and he reminds me of a baseball star. I think it was back in the 70s. Let me see if I can zoom in oh, on yeah. that. Speaking of baseball, that, I was meaning to ask bit. you. Because don't you think that looks like a baseball player guy right about there? Don't you think? Yeah. Wait a minute, I can focus this. There we go. That's a lot better. <laughs> yeah, wait. Oh, yeah, right there. That's it, that Jerry. That mustache definitely That mustache. I think he must so have played. Speaking of the 70s. Sp the other 70s? Who do you think is better? The Pittsburgh Pirates of the 70s or the Grateful Dead? Well, I got to admit, I like the Pirates a lot. Suppose we are given a countably pseudo Mobius Clifford de Sagas group M prime. Definition 3.1 A freche, an analytically Euclidean, maximal strub strain x to the nth power is commutative if Darbaugh's criterion applies. Let M of T epsilon, of course, less than. No, they'd be arbitrary. We say a so oh. Today, what I'd like to talk about is a very special substance that we use in everyday life, water. Now, the chemical formula for water is HO2. Um, I, um, yes? No, I'm pretty sure... No, I think you have that wrong. Well, you... So, sorry, I don't mean to be rude or interrupt. I'm pretty sure water is H2O. Get the get away from me. Uh, H2O? Well, I'd heard it that when you had these things written down, you didn't say the number. That this H2, it was mother. just H-O with ho, right there. Ho and H-O. Oh, what? Uh, don't, okay, just this just listen to me for a second. If it was HO2... What if I don't want to listen to it? That would mean that oxygen had a lot of... Or water had a lot of oxygen. Water doesn't have any oxygen. I know that. That's why we can't breathe under water. Good. Okay, this is waste here. All right. So, Jerry, start your... Um, cut this out now. All right, today what we'd like to talk about are some of my favorite things in the world, cells. So what I'd like to draw for you is a really fairly accurate representation of a cell. What we have here is the outer part of the cell, and right about here we can see that nucleus ever so beautifully. 
Once we've got a good, clear sense of the relationship between the cell boundaries and the nucleus, we can think about all the stuff that's inside the cell that's so important to us every day.